Well, my friends, I hope you enjoyed that walk with me. Um, some time has passed since I filmed it. It's been a month or so, but it was a sweltering hot day. Um, if you heard me breathing a little heavy, it was hot out and that was why. But I spent a few hours there walking around and took these video clips and mash them together for you. Um, I have a personal connection with that Kmart. I worked there about 15 years ago. Well, a little less, maybe like 12, 13, 14. But anyways, I worked there. And it was during a time when, you know, cell phones weren't as great and powerful. I probably had a Blackberry <laughs> at the time, or even a Nokia. And um, I was working the day of Black Friday. And, you know, the reason this Kmart haunts me is because of what happened to me on that Black Friday. I was, uh, you know, stocking and getting ready. I was the restocking overnight crew. It wasn't really overnight, it was like 5 a.m. But then they open at, I don't know, nine or 10. So I'd work from that morning until mid-afternoon typically. And, you know, put in clothing up, cat food, um, toiletries, stuff like that. And Black Friday, I was like, wow, there's some good sales. I'm probably gonna buy a few things. And I found this coat, it was $90 on sale for $9 or whatever it was, 12 maybe, something ridiculous like that. I said, wow, what a nice coat, fits me great. There's only one in a size extra small or whatever. So I, I said, I'm gonna hide this somewhere. And I tried really hard to find a place to hide it where nobody would find it. And <laughs> well, I had wound up going up a set of stairs. And this is why I had hoped to get inside of that Kmart, but I'm not somebody who wants to cause destruction or damaged property. So I did not break in. If there wasn't a door that I could open and walk through, I wasn't going to do that because I don't want to actually break in. Um, so <laughs> I wanted to prove that this area in the Kmart exists because it was, it just burned into my memory, it's terrifying. I walk up a set of stairs to find that the Kmart has an attic, a sweltering hot, terrifying attic. And when I say terrifying, I mean just downright horrific. There was moldy things in there. There was Christmas decorations from the 80s, 90s, 70s even. I mean, I, I couldn't properly date everything. There was records, there was cassettes, there was VHS tapes, there was just vintage stuff like you wouldn't believe, just covered in cobwebs and dust, old baby toys, old baby dolls that had their arms taken off. It was just something of true nightmares. You would see it in a horror movie. And I just, I would assume the attic would be empty like the rest of the store. Um, clearly, as you saw, the property is not um, in a restorable condition. Not just the Kmart, but the other buildings attached to it. Um, so I really wanted to get in and see if that attic was something that had anything in it. So I stored the coat in the attic and I was just frozen when I walked up there. I just found a, a old piece of furniture and I just threw it in a drawer. But then I looked around, I was just mortified at what I was seeing. It was just, like I said, it's the stuff of nightmares, the stuff of horror movies. And <laughs> I went back up for the coat and I never walked back in there and I don't think I worked there much longer. It was unreal. And to this day, I, <laughs> I only went in that Kmart a few more times after I worked there. They had closed maybe a year or so ago, if I had to recall. I had gone in there about three years ago and it was looking very much like a flea market. It smelled like mothballs. I was getting a little bit of that mothball scent where those garage doors were, where you could hear the alarm. Um, they had a lot of knockoff items. They had strange old clothes on hangers with like handwritten price tags. It wasn't the Kmart that I remembered, which, you know, I bought a Nintendo 3DS there when they first came out, you know, Pokemon games, Pokemon cars, they had it all there. Um, so, you know, you hope to go in there and find things like old video games in the attic, perhaps. I'm sure anything of value is gone. I'm sure other people have broken in. 
um, but it would be really nice to get in there. You know, I think I will go back there over time to see if there's any openings. Cause like I said, I don't want to cause any destruction to any property. That's not my place to do that. Um, but if somebody else is broken, I would love to go in there and revisit this. Um, but if you have any questions about my time working there or experiences there, let me know in the comments. I had also gone to that gym and, um, you know, somebody I was uh, friends with years ago had worked with the owner of the gym who committed suicide. And I think the gym did stay open for a little while longer, but he was uh, big into supercars. So he had, you know, really high end $100,000 plus cars and he had driven one into a bridge, like the side of it. Um, you know, very unfortunate, very tragic. I was no longer living in the area, but that's what somebody who worked for for him with his car situation had told me, and it was a very, very sad because they had spent time with with this person. Um, I don't want to give too much personal information out regarding that, but very sad. I mean, that gym was a nice gym when I went there, and it was nice to go to work, then go to the gym, and yeah, so. A lot of history there for me, but most importantly, that attic. Um, if anybody else has been in that attic, oh, please let me know in the comments some of the things you have seen up there. Oh, I will see you all very soon. Let me know if there's any other creepy places you want me to film in New England. I'll say bye for now and take care.